Hello, my name is Dr. Elena Michaels, and this is the card reading and guided meditation for Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. I want to welcome you to my channel, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so below and click on the little bell, and the bell will let you know whenever there is a new guided meditation. And I do a new guided meditation that is available every Wednesday. You can check and watch it whenever you want to, 24 seven, they all stay up. And so you can see it anytime. I ran into somebody recently and she said, oh, I have to remember to tune in on Wednesday to watch your guided meditation. And I said, no, they're all up there. You can watch 24 seven whenever you want. She says, oh, I had no idea. So you can watch whenever you want. If you click the little bell, the bell will let you know when a new one is up, okay? So, August 3rd, 2022. It's gonna be time for school to start already. And this year is just flying right by. And so, pretty soon it's gonna be fall, I can't believe it. Oh man, oh man, I remember so clearly when summer seemed to last forever and now it's bam, gone just like that. The times are flying. So let's let the time fly right now and pull some cards, okay? So I'm going to pull some cards. And for those of you who don't know, this is done. Hi, Luna, the meditation cat. Are you gonna participate tonight? Hi, yes, you are, I know. So this whole thing happened because I was doing our meditations live in person in Valencia every week. That was before COVID. And then COVID hit and my group said, please continue. And I started on Facebook, but there were some technical issues with Facebook. And then people got off of Facebook because it was too political and they said, do it on YouTube. Facebook would not let me put the link from Facebook on YouTube. So I just started a YouTube channel. And now I put the link on my Facebook pages. I have a few different Facebook pages and I have a Facebook group, Dr. Elena's Meditation Group, if you wanna join that. And that is where the meditation link for YouTube is always put. So if you go on to Facebook and you see, oh, only two people saw the meditation, they just saw it on that page. Two people just saw it on that page. Other people see it, they go directly to YouTube. Some people go to certain pages that they're used to going to. Of mine, I've got a few different ones. So, but it's all the same meditation. When it goes up on Wednesday, it's the same one, whether it's on Facebook or it's on YouTube or any of the Facebook pages or groups, it's all the same. I just put the link there so it's easy for people to find if they're used to going to a certain place on Facebook, okay? And also I put a little note on Instagram as well. And so, some people have asked me if I'm gonna start doing them live again in a group. And, you know, the room we were in, I would close the door of that room and everybody would lay down and they'd kind of be next to each other. If you want me to do them live again, put a note below or send me a note privately. Uh, excuse me. I'm already starting to uh, release. The releasing part is so I can explain it to you because somebody said they didn't understand what I meant by releasing. My eyes start to water, my nose starts to run. I sometimes have to clear my throat, I yawn, um, I sneeze, I cough. All of that is the releasing of energy so that I can more clearly pull in what I need to say to you during the guided meditation. These meditations are not prepared. They are not recorded. They are not rehearsed. They are not written, pre-written, nothing. The reason I use the cards is because the cards are like a map that let me know where we're gonna go in the guided meditation. When we were meeting live, I did not use the cards. We just would talk for a few minutes before the class began. See what I mean? We'd talk for a few minutes before I started the guided meditation and then I would know where to go because I could pick up on the energy in the room. But there's nobody here but Luna the meditation cat and myself. So, right Luna? 
Luna, are you going to help tonight? Yes, yeah, she is. She's going to contribute. Right? You're going to contribute, aren't you? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sometimes she talks, sometimes she doesn't. So I guess she's going to be talking tonight. So um, I'm just going to get busy and pull some cards, and the cards will be a map for us to know where we're going to go, where I'm going to go in the guided meditation. I lay the cards out here so I have them in front of me when it's time to go into the guided meditation part. If you haven't watched the tarot card and the angel card readings before, they actually help start to take you deeper because they tap into your unconscious, your subconscious. And the way it works is, I'm not telling fortunes with this, although many people send me private notes and tell me that the readings seem to be 100% perfect for them as if it was a private reading. And I do private readings too, you know, by the way. But the cards start to take you into a deeper level of awareness. And from that place of deeper awareness, boy, I'm really releasing a lot. Uh, that place of deeper awareness, you may find clarity on certain situations in your life that you've been wondering about, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a work situation, whether it's a loving situation, whatever. Whatever kind of clarity that you've been looking for that you've wanted to, right? <laughs> Whatever kind of clarity that you've been looking for in a certain situation, you may find it from what the cards say. So allow yourself to get into that place that the cards will take you to. And then when we go into the guided meditation, bam, you'll go much deeper. Okay? All right. I'm petting her so she doesn't talk so much, right? But I can't pet you the whole time. I can't pet you the whole time, okay? I'm sorry, I can't. And you can't sit on my lap either because I have to do business. <laughs> I have to do stuff here. I have to do stuff here, Luna. All right, I'm gonna choose from the traditional tarot deck first and let's see what's going to happen here. Shh. All right, put this over here. And I'm gonna shuffle these in front of you because someone said that they thought I was pulling the cards out in advance. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I'm an intuitive card reader, by the way, so I, you know, I don't go by what the book says or what a book says, you know, because a lot of books say different things. I just go by in the moment what the download is, what, what I'm getting in the moment of whatever cards show up. Hey. Shh. Luna. What? I, okay. All right. She's just so... Usually she's not right here next to me. She's down on the ground. You can't get on my lap right now. All right. Here we go. Cut the cards once. Cut them twice. Cut them three times. And the card at the top is the one I'm going to pull. What's really interesting about this is I thoroughly shuffle the cards each time I pull them each week. And I not only shuffle them, but I open up the deck and stick the cards in that were coming up from that reading throughout the deck so they're not next to each other, which sometimes can happen if you shuffle them. But we get the same cards over and over again. It's almost like the universe is doing a big two by four to kind of drill home an idea. So let's see what's coming up tonight. Here we go. Okay, Justice, get down, come on, go to, I need the table, I, get down, get down, Luna, get down, come on, get down, I need the table, there we go. Okay, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't had this one in a long time, since I can remember, actually. I'm gonna pull another one from this deck, right after it. Ooh, two came, all right. Oh boy, okay, that's pretty cool and the one that came with it, this one. All right, so I'm gonna put this deck aside now and get my glasses so I can tell you what's cooking with these cards. The first one is the Justice card, okay? The Justice is a major arcana, this is a major arcana card. The major arcana cards are very powerful. This means it's like an important point, okay? This is an 11. 
this is the 11 card in the major arcana and you see this guy is holding scales in one hand if you look closely they're right there and a sword in the other hand okay and he's wearing red with a green cloak and a crown of three and two and an emerald on the center all right He's behind, he's behind, between two pillars, okay? Now, justice. This card is about staying balanced when you speak. The swords have to do with words and fire. You can cut someone with swords. You can cut someone with your words. You wanna be speaking with balance, okay? See how even they are? And you wanna be grounded. So if there's something you need to say to somebody, he's wearing red, this is root chakra, but he's got a green cloak, which is the heart chakra. The three crowns there, it's actually the total of five. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Five is a pentacle. And when you know what a pentacle is, it's a, um, when you have your arms out like this and your head is the top of the five-pointed star, these two arms are the two points on the right-hand side and then the two points on the bottom are your feet, okay? So you want to be grounded, centered when you speak. And remember, he's in front of a purple drape. That's, you know, your upper chakra there. Between two pillars, balanced. He's between two pillars, so he's balanced. He's carrying the, the scales of Libra, carrying the sword up, not welding the sword, not welding his words to hurt, but holding his sword up so it's coming from the highest. You see that? Justice for all. Okay, next card that came out. This is a knight of swords, another sword, okay? Look at this guy. He is like rushing on in in a white horse. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got to get my glasses on for this one. I'm kind of laughing when I look at it because this is usually a person. And he's just flying right in with like, you know, no holds barred. Look at that horse. It's like flying. The feet aren't even touching the ground. It's a white horse. I think something's gonna be coming to your rescue. Whatever it is that you've been dealing with, something is gonna be coming to your rescue, charging in on your life. See, it's kind of the swords up in the air. It's like, charge! He's also got the red cloak around him, around his armor, and uh, again, grounded. So if you look at what's coming out of his helmet, it looks like wings. So this is Mercury. So some communication is going to be coming in from a male source some masculine energy or a female that has masculine energy or authoritarian energy is going to be coming into your life with a message coming in full force it's going to be a good message okay positive it's going to be positive yep coming on in quickly coming quickly. Now we have another guy on a horse. Okay, now this is the six of wands. Six is, remember this? Look at the top of this crown. One, two, three. See? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Six is two threes. Here are six rods. This is a celebration of some kind. See this? It's like celebrating something. These are rods or wands, and they have to do with creativity, the breath, creativity flowing. Um, and look, the horse is very calm, not flying in. And again, a red cloak, okay? Here's people celebrating, see that? A red cloak, grounded, 
but sitting on a horse wearing a green cover, which is the heart chakra again. This is a, a kind of a calm centered card of celebration and often a celebration with others, celebrating something. So maybe there's something you need to be celebrating or maybe you're going to be celebrating something soon. The horses are all white, coming from a pure source, see? The horse is coming from a pure source. So that's that, pretty interesting stuff. And now I'm gonna go into another deck. I'm gonna go into an Archangel deck. Let's see what's in here. What card comes up in here? I'm starting to feel really hot. This happens sometimes when I do the cards. I get heated up. I've got a fan on me, I think. Do I have the fan on? Yeah, good. Okay. Let's see. Let's get more clarification on what we just pulled, what just showed up for us. A little more clarification and substantiation and elaboration. Cut and pull, okay. I, I always cut at different times. I just, whenever I'm gutted to cut the cards, I cut them. Whenever I'm gutted to take one off, I take one off. And this was only one cut this time. Okay, this is comfort, wow. This is Archangel Azrael, all right? Let me read you about this. Comfort. This card was kind of a comfortable, comfortable card. And this card was kind of a comfortable card. Very grounded, centered, and comfortable. This middle one was kind of like rushing on in with a message from a male energy or an authoritarian source, okay? Could be a boss, could be a parent, could be, you know, uh, or just a, a man. All right, comfort. Mm. Now look, here's another wreath. Remember? The wreath right there. See how they're all connected? Okay, this is comfort. Archangel Azrael says, I am with you in your time of need, helping your heart to heal. Okay, you know what? Do you have some kind of emotional thing you need to heal from? Someone who betrayed you? Someone who disappointed you because they didn't do what they said they were going to do? Some kind of emotional pain in your heart? Ask Archangel Azrael to comfort you because Azrael is available to everyone at all times. All you'd have to do is ask, oh, excuse me, you just have to ask. Azrael is A-Z-R-A-E-L. That's how you spell it. I'm gonna read you from the book once again, look at the card. Beautiful. All right, Azrael, here we go. Comfort. We all need comfort. That's one of the most important things in a relationship, you know? Being in a relationship with someone who can comfort you. And, um, if you're not in a relationship, you have to get your comfort, even if you are in a relationship, your comfort has to come from a higher source. You know, whatever you call the higher source, whether you call it God, Jesus, Buddha, Christ, the Holy Mother, universal energy, higher source, any of that, that energy is comforting energy. It's pure love, okay? And sometimes we get it by holding someone or having someone hold us on the physical plane but it's always available to you, always available to you on the spiritual plane, whether you're in a relationship or whether there's someone to hug you and comfort you or not. And the angels, they want to comfort you. They're available to you and that's what they do. You know, angels of comfort, that's even a recording that I often listen to. It's called Angels of Comfort. 
Let me read you about comfort. Even the strongest person experiences upsetting situations. <sighs> oh, man. Even the strongest person experiences upsetting situations. And there's no shame in taking time to heal your heart. This is a good time for quiet reflection upon your true feelings. Write them down in a private journal and then call upon me, Archangel Azrael, to bring comfort to your heart and mind. I can help you sleep better at night and put your mind at ease. Do you notice how my voice changed when I started reading about comfort? Because I feel that Archangel Azrael is actually present in the room and my voice changed and took on a softer, quieter tone. Not consciously, just, it just happened. <sighs> uh. Azrael's aura. aura is a beautiful shade of vanilla cream. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to keep doing this. If I don't do it, my eyes get too watery and I can't read. Azrael's aura is a beautiful shade of vanilla cream, a very pale yellow tone. He surrounds grieving and dying persons with this loving light to bring them comfort if you're grieving about something, ask him to come and comfort you. When Azrael is around, you may see eggshell covered, colored, twinkling lights in the room. The crystal creamy yellow calcite, calcite is calibrated to Azrael's energy. The crystal creamy yellow calcite is calibrated to Azrael's energy. So holding or wearing this crystal may lend additional comfort. See, my nose is running now. My eyes are watering and my nose is running. Azrael. Let's go into a different deck now. I feel my whole energy has just changed. As soon as I pulled that card, I felt my energy change. You probably picked up on it too. Go into this deck right here. Another angel deck. shuffle this one. Give us more substantiation, more clarification, more of a realization about what's going on here. And cut the cards and cut one more time. And here we go. Energy work. We've had this before. This is about having some energy work, and if you're grieving over something, a betrayal perhaps, or someone who didn't show up for you the way they should have. 
energy work can help move that through your system. I will read you about this. Life can be electrifying because its very essence is energy. Your body is a remarkable energy field that will positively respond to loving treatments. Your hands and heart are activated to give healing energy to you, your loved ones, and clients. Take your hands right now and rub them together and get some warmth. You can feel the heat in your hands. And put your hands on your heart. Feel that you have the ability to give yourself healing energy to heal your heart. Interesting that I'm wearing red, the color of the heart. I often don't wear red, but I'm wearing it tonight. Feel that loving energy that comes out of the palms of your hands going into your heart to heal your heart. Take some nice deep breaths. Imagine that loving, healing energy coming through your hands and going into your heart. Your hands are magic. Right here and right here, you've got some minor chakras. These are called moon chakras. The moon is feminine. Feminine energy is nurturing. You have the ability to heal yourself from emotional wounds. If you don't know how to do that, get some guidance from a clinician. It doesn't have to be me, even though I am a psychotherapist. But get some guidance from a clinician, a licensed clinician, to help you give yourself that positive energy so you can move through a stuck situation of grief and loss. That's what that's about. But I'm going to read you more about that from the book. Energy work. I know what it's going to tell you. It's going to tell you to get some energy work done. You receive this card because the angels say you'd benefit from some energy work, like Reiki or Qigong or even massage. You can find a qualified practitioner by contacting your local metaphysical or holistic health center. The angels suggest that you initiate a session where you'd receive an energy healing treatment. This card can also signify the angels' message that your life purpose involves giving energy healing work to others. I know many of you are energy healers that are watching this right now and that watch this channel and you heal others, even if you don't think of yourself as an energy healer, you heal others just by your very vibrational frequency and being around others who pick up on your vibrational frequency. The cleaner you are and the more pure you are of your vibrational frequency, the better you will be as a change agent on this planet. Your first responsibility is keep yourself clean and clear. This card can also signify the angel's message that your life purpose involves giving energy healing work to others. If you have training in this respect or you've been guided to seek training, this card is a sign that you would excel in this area. But there are other meanings and here they are. Clear the energy in your home or other environments. You're very sensitive to energy, so regularly clear yourself of any energy you may have absorbed. 
Shield yourself by visualizing yourself surrounded by protective white and purple light. Learn about energy healing. Learn about how to heal yourself. There you go. It's in your hands. Give yourself a hand. You have the power to heal yourself. You know, see what I'm doing right now? I'm kind of like hugging myself. You know, you can, there are other um, minor chakras right here. I'm gonna sit up so you can, right here. Right in the indentation of your shoulder. There are other minor chakras right there. Moon chakras. So when you put this and this together, you're amplifying, giving yourself moon energy, giving yourself feminine, healing, nurturing energy. Feel that. deck coming up here we go pulling from the indigo deck now I've said this before but if you're new here you're an indigo if you came to this channel and you're still here and you're sticking around and you want to hear about the guided meditation you're an indigo Indigos are not just children, they are anyone of any age who is very sensitive, intuitive, often very empathic. That's why you have to learn how to shield yourself with powerful healing energy, which I read in one of the other readings here. So again, and interestingly enough, see these are silver on the side, which is the color of the moon. See that? All right, if you want to be more intuitive, wear silver. If you want to be more aggressive and more yang, wear gold. Uh, sometimes I wear silver, sometimes I wear gold. Depends upon how I feel. If you're feeling weak and vulnerable, maybe it's time to put some gold on and wear gold. Gold is a powerful masculine metal. Silver is a feminine, intuitive, introspective more yin so gold is more yang yang is uh, kind of you know out there yin is contained internal all right one more cut here we go and let's see what's coming up here okay this is divine timing as we know, everything happens in divine timing. If it's not happening fast enough for you, relax, allow, and divine timing will step in and it will manifest for you. Everything manifests in divine timing. You can't force things. You know the energy of just wanting to force things? Don't do that because that eliminates divine timing. Divine timing is when it's going to be best for you. Hmm. I just happened to look at this card, so I better share it with you. Acceptance. Like I was saying, just accept divine timing and allow, accept the timing. Allow, allow, allow. I'm going to read to you about divine timing and then I'm going to read to you about acceptance since that was the card that I was guided to look at and that was the card that was there on the back of the deck. Divine timing. This card means that the resolution of the situation you're inquiring about is delayed by much more than mere circumstance. Divine timing means that nothing can happen 
before the dynamics of your life are completely ready for it. Many factors are involved in divine timing, including other people's free will choices. If your wish is fulfilled at the wrong time, the conditions won't be right and the manifestation won't be lasting or permanent. Trust in the divine order of things and know that you are on the right path toward the fulfillment of your wishes and your mission. Keep your faith strong and be open to intuitive guidance that calls you to action. If you feel that you can't take action or that you're not motivated to take action, wear gold. Open, oh, one step at a time. All of your prayers are heard and answered exactly when they're supposed to be. Keep your faith strong and be open to intuitive guidance that calls you to action. One step at a time. All of your prayers are heard and answered when they're supposed to be. got an hourglass you see she's got an hourglass I always was mesmerized by hourglasses I think they're really cool very hypnotic watching the sound come the sand come down you know in the little thing and fill up the bottom part very hypnotic okay the other card was acceptance let's find that one As an indigo, you're built to question everything as part of your mission on this planet and part of your mission of making healthful choices and changes to this planet. However, this characteristic may cause you to reject a part of your life that's necessary in order for you to get to the next step. Hmm. This card is a message for you to search through your life and determine if there is anything or anyone you are rejecting and pushing away. Accepting your life completely is the best thing you can do for yourself now. While this may not be easy or even seem right, know that you simply cannot change everything you do not like, and certain things must be tolerated in this lifetime. Ask the angels to bring you strength and comfort to make letting go and accepting easier. All right, well, it's time to move on down the pike and go into the guided meditation. I think I know where we're going. I got the roadmap right here. So let me look at the clock and see what time it is. So I can put that in the description. Okay. We're going to begin the guided meditation now. And so I'm going to ask you to lie down and make yourself comfortable. When we did the class live, everyone was lying down. Occasionally there would be a, a few occasional guests that would come and decide they wanted to sit up throughout the entire thing but I want your back straight and I want you comfortable. That's the most important thing. The more comfortable you are, the more relaxed you become. The more relaxed you become, the easier it is for you to take in the information that resonates with your belief system. It starts with being relaxed. So your back is straight and you are not going to be disturbed, hopefully. And close your eyes and get ready to just let go and allow. Getting ready now to begin. Any sounds you hear that you recognize as everyday normal sounds allow you to go even deeper and let go even more. 
to gain more of a benefit. The more you can let go, the more you can relax, the more benefit you will receive. Beginning to notice that your breath is starting to change. You're starting to breathe more diaphragmatically, which means that your abdomen raises up when you take an inhale and it deflates and goes down when you do an exhale. Notice that right now. You may want to put your hands on your abdomen around your diaphragm just to feel that happening. sounds you hear allow you to go even deeper. Deeper and deeper. Relaxing more and more. Allowing the cares and the concerns and the worries and the frustrations, the decisions, the conflicts, all fall away. Everything from the day is falling away. It's over. Even now, feeling more and more relaxed. Even now, feeling more and more as if you are able to release with every exhale any worries or concerns. Your mind knows exactly what needs to be released. Your mind knows what needs to be let go of. Beginning on the count of five, letting go more and more. Continuing down to four as your body begins to release from the top of your head down over the front of your face, down over the back of your head, into your cervical spine, the area where your neck attaches to your back. That is often a sore spot because of the positions we hold our neck in. That's your C7, that bone right there. Allow that area to be healed by your very intention. Continuing down through your shoulders and down through your upper arms and your hands and your fingers. See if you can feel the energy, the relaxation moving down through your body and coming out the tips of your fingers. It feels like a tingling sensation. See if you can become aware of it. I'm feeling it right now. Coming down from four to three. Coming down and feeling your collarbone, your thyroid, and your thymus gland, which is right here. To normalize, your thymus gland is where your body makes T cells 
to fight illness and infection. And your entire torso begins to warm up and allow that relaxation to come in. Allowing all of the organs in your torso to rebalance, regenerate, and renew themselves and realign themselves to health. down to two, down through the pelvis, down through the lower digestive system, everything normalizing, everything balancing, everything renewing and realigning. Feeling the energy moving down through your thighs, down through your knees. Coming down on one now, as it comes down through your calves and your ankles. And if your feet are flat on the ground, you may feel that energy coming out the soles of your feet. It feels like a tingling. You can change your position anytime you like. You don't have to stay still. If you change your position, it is merely your body releasing stored up tension of the day. The key is to allow, allow, allow. Let go, let go, let go. In a moment, you're going to hear some tones and we'll count from one down to zero. Allow the tones to let your consciousness ride on them, riding on the frequency of the sounds taking you deeper and deeper and deeper. That's it. You want to go there. Your body, your nervous system has been waiting for this opportunity to go into parasympathetic mode. Allow it to happen. Parasympathetic mode is the only part of your nervous system that allows you to heal and recalibrate. There is sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is everyday reality and pressure. Parasympathetic is where you are right now in this level of consciousness where your body can recalibrate and heal. So just let it go. Allow it to happen. Your nervous system craves this so that you can feel balanced and grounded. Every one of these audios and videos take you to parasympathetic. And it feels wonderful to be in a parasympathetic state. It feels very grounding and some people say they crave getting into the parasympathetic state. They can feel it in their energy level when it's time to go into parasympathetic. And you're there right now.
getting to go, getting ready to go even deeper, letting go even more. Here we go, from one down to zero as you ride the frequency currents of the sounds you hear. deeper to zero. can hurt or heal. You become more and more conscious of coming from a balanced, grounded place when you speak. A message is coming. It's coming swiftly. It's a positive message. It may come from a male person or a male energy. It may come from an authoritarian source. But it's a positive message. This is a time to celebrate from a grounded place. The expression resting on your laurels. You've accomplished much in your personal journey, in your personal mission. Time to Give yourself a break and honor yourself. This is a time for feeling very creative as well. Others may join in to help you celebrate or to help you do a creative project. Comfort is always available to you when you are grieving a loss of any kind. Archangel Azra El is the angel of comfort for you. Call him and he will come. Energy work is appropriate now. Your hands contain the power to heal you using your palms and the moon chakras within them. 
charging your body by crossing your palms, your arms, and resting your palms in the indentations of your shoulders and the front of your shoulders. That amplifies the nurturing moon chakra energy. Your hands can go to any part of your body to heal. For emotional hurts and betrayals, cross your palms and put your palms on your heart and breathe consciously, asking Azrael to be present, to come to you, to help you heal help you heal the loss, help you heal the grief. The grief of what could have been, the loss of what could have been. Allowing you to also see what is. Divine timing is everything. Allow, allow, allow. No need to resist for what you resist and say you don't want is what you're going to get. So allow. And you will receive in divine timing since all of your prayers and requests are always heard. Acceptance is key. Acceptance of divine timing. Acceptance of what is to allow it to fall away so new things that you would like can come in to your world. balance and recalibrate. I thank you for spending this time with me and I look forward to meeting you again.
in this dimension, in this frequency. Sending you many blessings. And until we meet again, namaste.